Good morning and welcome to Study IQ, my dear friends. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you are learning good today, 7th December. And let's see what we have got in the Hindu today. But before that, I have a very positive, very interesting quote for you guys. Walt Disney has said that all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Courage is one of the most basic things. Without courage, you cannot even dream. Without courage, you cannot even think big. Right? So be more and more courageous. Uh, practice courageousness in your day-to-day -day life and uh, you will see a big difference in results and in everything that you do or overall quality of life. With this, dear friends, our pen drive and template courses are available for various different exams. To find out more about it, do check out studyiq.com. If you have any question or queries regarding it, you can feel free and give us a call on the numbers that you can see on your screen. If you want to check out demo lectures, then they are available on studyiq.com. Let me very quickly give you a bird's eye view on what we have got on our table. This one is about COP24. This one is about uh, USA and Saudi Arabia's relationship. We have a very interesting yes, no, and it's complicated uh, topic, a social media polarizing society. I will take you through some important points that we find here. And then we have this quick retreat. It's about this uh, protests uh, that are going on in France and uh, our discussion today we are going to start with this shielding witnesses uh, now yesterday it was a news item and today we find an editorial on this particular topic so this itself indicates that we are on a right path as far as our news selection is concerned isn't it because we have consistently observed these things uh, that all the news that we discuss you find articles and editorials on them uh, either you know in near future or maybe a bit later on so uh, that's that's an indication in itself that uh, things are in the right or we are heading in right direction now the thing is the uh, supreme court uh, took a very important decision yesterday it has uh, clearly stated that uh, now the time has come that we have to protect we have to ensure that witnesses are protected by center or you can say witnesses are protected or when it comes to protection of witnesses it is responsibility of the government right and this is uh, something that was uh, uh, missing in our society or you can say missing in the law for a very long period of I mean, since time immemorial because we have observed I'll just give you an example of uh, Indian films uh, I'm sure we all have uh, watched uh, many Indian films and uh, we know this common story that we used to find nowadays it's not that much but still you find this thing that you know criminals they can uh, they can threaten these uh, witnesses and uh, because of this thing there are we can you know films are basically inspired from uh, things that are taking place in, uh, re uh, in in real society or in society not all of them but many of them so intimidation uh, you know threatening witnesses uh, influencing them uh, making sure that they turn hostile uh, are all these various different uh, you know pressure tactics uh, that are uh, deployed by this uh, criminal class and uh, they have been successful as well and this thing is uh, one of the most i would say this protecting witness is one of the most basic thing as well as one of the most important thing about our criminal justice system now you can have the best uh, uh, police officers or best uh, you can say police team right uh, they will try the level best to go through investigation and everything they will collect a witness and they will collect evidence and everything they will note down they will prepare this report right so this report will finally will be filed in the court and when things are going on in the court at that point of time when witness will turn hostile right and then all this hard work uh, conducted by these police people or the lawyers uh, you know precious time of uh, this whole criminal justice system uh, will be wasted at the same time it will create more damage uh, in in this fabric of our society because when you can do this thing what you can do is you can bypass law that means uh, you are the king of law right uh, law is below you and you are when i say you i mean to say those criminals right uh, they have uh, done this thing many a times uh, of course law is uh, the ultimate king it should be uh, that's how it should be but uh, in real world uh, what we find is that uh, there are a few pockets out there there are criminals out there they can do whatever they like and uh, uh, this has uh, polluted our society it is just like a cancer you know because 
once you have this uh, gunda raj or when you have this uh, hooligans who are ruling uh, the system not directly but indirectly they are influencing politicians uh, they are having this uh, good grip on on uh, police people they are not all of them and uh, you cannot uh, have uh, complete control over police but there are a few policemen or there are in fact many policemen out there they are courageous enough but still we find this thing that uh, this is a dark reality of our society and it's not just uh, something that's going on in our country uh, the proportion or i would say the quantity could be a bit higher in in developing countries compared to developed world but in developed world as well you have this mafias and hooligans and all this organized uh, you know criminals and they are in this organized crimes so witness you know it's a very important piece of evidence uh, it's a, it's a sort of a, i would say a, a very important uh, cog in this big machine uh, or this machinery of uh, judiciary and when uh, they are not protected when witnesses are not protected naturally they will turn hostile isn't it because at the end of the day uh, they too love their family members and uh, when they have this negative attitude you know many times we find that uh, the government is not ready to protect them there are so many people they die there there are cases uh, right uh, that uh, and there are incidents uh, that uh, uh, these witnesses have been killed uh, because they were not protected by uh, police personnel so many law commission reports as well as uh, court judgments uh, for years have emphasized about the need to protect witness or witnesses now why witnesses are turning hostile or why we find so many witness, uh, witnesses are turning hostile one of the basic reason is that uh, you know they are not protected simple as that if you don't protect them if you don't care about them if, see a person who is ready to you know most of the time in this criminal cases if someone is willing uh, to come to the court uh, you know spend his or her own money invest his or her own time uh, you know after this court procedure if someone is coming over there then one thing is there that that person is genuinely interested or that person has this uh, you know tilt towards justice but when you are not protecting that person right what you are doing is you are sending a very negative signal in society and this will demotivate other people as well so this culture of justice uh, will you know this whole culture will will be destroyed or has been destroyed because of this lack of protection and this is one of the main reason why justice ak sikri has said that the condition of witnesses in indian legal system is pathetic and uh, as it takes uh, them because of one of the reason why it is pathetic, pathetic is because indian legal system uh, takes this uh, witnesses uh, for granted we don't really care about them so now we know that uh, this thing is uh, you know Uh, is something that uh, court or uh, this uh, states uh, they have to follow or the government has to follow because yesterday supreme court uh, took this important decision so a witness protection order uh, will be passed by a competent authority and uh, this scheme this protection scheme uh, will be funded by budgetary support from state governments as well as donations will be accepted by uh, the state governments and this money will be used for uh, for for protecting this victim now money is one of the most important thing as well as implementation of this uh, this witness protection policy or this uh, this whole law is uh, will determine how successful we will be in in creating this uh, safe environment for our witnesses because you need uh, of course uh, logistics right uh, you need all this transportation and there are so many things that uh, that you have to provide to a person like if there is a big case right uh, in which you have this big names or high profile case then you have to uh, shift that person his or her family out of uh, you know that particular city you have to take them to different state as well so what about their business what about their future what about their kids education their property and so many other things right their professional circle their personal circle so it's not that easy so you need money for that so financial as well as logical uh, logistical challenges are there uh, but we imp- if we implement this thing for time being it may look like uh, there will be a sort of you know uh, a rise in in spending or cost at present but uh, in a long term future if we think about this long term overall future of society uh, then this is going to reap so many you know it will 
it will be it will be a boon uh, for our society if we provide uh, protection to our witnesses uh, moving on to second item it's about uh, uh, f- uh, protests uh, that are going on in france uh, yesterday we have talked about so many things associated with france because uh, it was part of your uh, you know there was a big article uh, written on this item so i'll quickly give you a recap right it's about fuel tax people are not happy about this rise in fuel tax and uh, there are people out there in france uh, they are saying that uh, this rise in fuel tax is basically they have nothing to you know nothing will be left uh, with them and uh, in rural france uh, that's what people say that uh, connectivity public transport is not that uh, that much widespread so they have to use cars they don't have any other option and when you are rising tax on fuel then that is killing their pockets or oh, it's a big hole in their pocket uh, you can say now violent uh, country wide protests uh, have been observed and it's not just country wide you can also find them in various different uh, overseas territories of uh, france as well now government has decided that it is going to uh, cancel this uh, this tax proposal altogether so that's a big u turn uh, by the government uh, as far as this uh, carbon dioxide emission or carbon emission is concerned because uh, the positive impact of tax rise or you know fuel tax hike is uh, you can directly see an impact on co2 emission when fuel becomes expensive people will use it less people will you know turn off their cars on their uh, on these signals and other places so all these small steps uh, they they make a big difference so hike is not always bad it is good as well in terms of uh, environment but in terms of saving in terms of uh, economy it can uh, work as a disruption because you will be able to save less uh, it will create inflation so these are few challenges that are associated with hike in fuel tax now for macron right uh, the manuel macron is the president of uh, france he came to power because he took a pledge he said that he will modernize the economy of france as well as he will uh, you know restore this popular trust in politicians uh, that was missing uh, in his uh, uh, you know in his uh, predecessor's time so he was he came to power because of this two promises and what we find is that uh, at present situation of uh, france is bit not that good because of uh, you know after this financial crunch uh, crunch of uh, 2007-8 uh, we have seen that as uh, sort of uh, still this uh, western world is uh, you know it's still not completely out of it uh, it's getting there slowly uh, we can say things are not that bad but things are not that uh, it's not flourishing right it's uh, it's it is it's struggling i would say there are a little bit of uh, headwinds out uh, out there headwinds are still uh, out there so so all these things uh, you know has this economical things uh, of course uh, it will have a, a sort of impact on your social life as well as well as all your on your political life so this is something uh, th- that has this fuel tax hike has has worked just like a spark or a trigger we have talked about it yesterday as well now government uh, has also indicated that it is ready to uh, reinstate this wealth tax now wealth tax again is uh, you know it's uh, see wealth tax is applicable on those people who have huge amount of money now if you are applying wealth tax then there are positive as well as negative things associated with the positive thing is that the government will directly have more money so this money can be used for for investment and for other things but uh, negative thing is that when you are taking away money from or if you are charging more tax on wealthy people then they will be not that happy to invest that money in the market so less job creation less business expansion so these things are there as well so it's negative and positive we it depends from which side we are looking at and what's uh, the more you can say more or need of the what's your priority we have to decide as a country uh, france uh, a problem with france is that uh, its uh, tax system or its uh, rates are highest in european union and we're talking about european union it's a very important uh, player of uh, eu that is european union it is one of the you can say uh, there used to be three pillars uk france and germany but at present they have two pillars germany and france and uh, let me take you through some uh, geographical information about france uh, paris is is its capital as we all know uh, starting clockwise 12 o'clock you find belgium then you have luxembourg then you have uh, germany switzerland uh, italy 
Uh, then at six o'clock you find this Mediterranean Sea. Six o'clock means here, right? We are going clockwise. So Mediterranean Sea on the southern side, southeastern side. Spain on the southern side, and uh, here you find the Bay of Biscay, an English channel on northwestern side, and uh, this water is predominantly or basically of Atlantic uh, Ocean. So these are a few geographical details associated with France. Uh, now the thing is, uh, we were talking about uh, this uh, France as a European Union player. The thing with European Union is that uh, if something goes in one country, particularly in country like France and Germany, like strong players, if something negative takes place, then you will find uh, this sort of wave spreading in different parts of Europe. If uh, something positive takes place, then that thing again is, you know, it's like a virus. Uh, uh, it will it will spread in different parts of Europe as well. So if Emmanuel Macron is not able to handle uh, this uh, this situation, right, uh, then that's going to create more troubles uh, for for European Union and for overall uh, you know world because uh, EU plays a very important role uh, as far as climate change is concerned. The Paris uh, Agreement took place in Paris, that is in uh, France capital. So if uh, France itself is not following rules and regulations, or if it is not able to achieve this NDCs nationally uh, nationally determined contributions, then uh, what we can expect from other countries and Macron himself uh, is considered as a champion of uh, of uh, this, uh, you know, um, um, eco friendliness. Or I would say he has he has always uh, uh, stood there for. Uh, for mitigating and for reducing climate change and global warming and promoting more green environment. So it's going to be very important for uh, European Union as well. And uh, last item that uh, you have, you know, in, in various different countries of this European Union, uh, you have to follow this EU rules as well. So as per EU rules, your uh, fiscal deficit target uh, should be below 3% of your GDP. You cannot cross this thing. So that's going to add some more challenges uh, uh, on this uh, French government. Now, dear friends, something uh, related with Europe, something related with uh, what we have just uh, talked about. Uh, we are going to talk about this uh, COP24, a meeting that is taking place in Poland. Now, uh, help yourself with uh, this geographical location of Poland. I have just, you know, demonstrated how you should approach. So, start clockwise, start from this Baltic Sea, and then you can have a full circle. So, capital is Warsaw. Now, this COP24 uh, under this big umbrella of UNFCCC, that means United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, uh, is uh, going on right uh, from 3rd December 2018 to 14th December. This meeting uh, will take place or it will go on. And as I told you, it's taking place in Poland. At present, the situation is that if we compare our Earth's or this planet's global average temperature than uh, before 1750 uh, what it used to be at present it is one degree celsius higher than what it used to be around 1750 and you can imagine just a rise of one degree average temperature has created so many negative things around us so many species are dying ice is melting uh, right uh, this uh, uh, this island nations uh, may sink in in few years uh, so it's a big 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 problem for every one of us uh, for everyone right and uh, concentration of carbon dioxide so far it has never been means uh, so far you know uh, to date we have started uh, recording this uh, um, this uh, this this figures associated with uh, this meteorological things uh, uh, since we started recording all the items and whatever we know at present right uh, there was a time some millions of years ago it used to be around this 410 ppm uh, but uh, now we are at uh, 410 ppm this is concentration of carbon dioxide in atmosphere and this is uh, i must tell you it's very very dangerous thing because you know the impact of greenhouse gases more carbon dioxide means uh, more uh, you can say heat will be absorbed by this carbon dioxide and it will make our earth more warm and uh, this one degree uh, so this average temperature we have to make sure that it stays below 1.5 whatever we do it should be below 1.5 by turn of the century now the main aim of this meeting is to have a rule book for Paris agreement Paris agreement took place back in 2015 at that point of time 
uh, this NDCs were decided, that means nationally determined contributions. So each and every country was given this democratic choice that they can, uh, you know, come out with their own figures. They will come out with, uh, they will decide for themselves, like uh, what they can do and how much they are ready to do and things like that. And for developing nations, right, you need financial as well as technological support because uh, these developed countries, they are the main culprits and they have money, they have technology and everything. And now developing countries as well are aspiring to become developed countries. So the more technology and finance you provide them, the better technology they can use, right? And uh, if they can use better technology like solar panels and wind energy and other things. Uh, so if uh, developing countries can use this thing, then we will find that will be less carbon emission and everything will be. All right, so Paris Agreement. Uh, in this Paris Agreement, we agreed, as I told you, that uh, we will control uh, this uh, global temperature, average temperature below 1.5 degrees Celsius. But the way things are going on, it looks like we may easily touch uh, 3 degrees Celsius to 4 degrees Celsius uh, if the way things are going on. And once we cross 2 degrees Celsius uh, threshold, then uh, we are at a tipping point or we have hit that tipping point from where there is no u-turn we cannot come back right we cannot restore things and we don't know uh, how much bad it will be but it will be very bad once we cross this average temperature uh, that is uh, two degrees celsius higher than what it used to be so to sort these things out we need rules and regulations and we have some articles in paris agreement so article 9 of paris agreement uh, talks about uh, this uh, you know financial support from developed uh, countries and per year, uh, developed countries have to contribute uh, altogether $100 billion. And this money will be distributed between various different uh, developing nations so that they can have this proper technology and they can cut down their you know, carbon emission and things like that. Now, Article 9.5 of this Paris Agreement, that is PA, says that uh, you have to communicate your support, you have to uh, you know, communicate your pledges and you have to... Uh, you know, write down and you have to tell like what you are going to do. So we need to have some standardization. Without standardization of processes, you cannot achieve results as simple as that because here we are talking about so many various different countries. They all have various different challenges. So we need one standard procedure. Like you will get this much money based on this much formula and things like that. These are the things that you need to do. These are the things, do's and don'ts and other things. But uh, this is the main problem. We are trying to achieve this rule book. We are, that's what we are trying to do. And this is the main, you can say, one of the most important job of rule book uh, is to standardize uh, these procedures. And uh, it is also estimated that we need $4.4 trillion to implement nationally determined contributions. But at present, if you go through the figure, what we find is that just $4 billion is dispersed under this uh, this uh, this Paris Agreement. So the way things are going on in practical world, on 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 books, on theories. In fact, in in books and theories as well, we are lagging behind because uh, this meeting took place. Paris uh, meeting that is COP21 took place back in December 2015, and we are in December 2018, and it's been three years. We are not able to, uh, you know, formulate uh, rules and regulations. So. Uh, you know, implementation of Paris Agreement will start from 2020 and it is going to, this period is 2020 to 2030, one decade. So at present, if we haven't sorted out rules, then how we are going to see implementation? Look at this money contribution, right? It should be 100 billion, uh, but what we are getting is 30 billion and things like that. Uh, it is also said that uh, countries with average income exceeding 15,000 can easily help uh, other countries in, you know, capacity and finance and technology uh, this sort of t uh, capacity building, financial and technological support can be provided by a country whose average per capita income is 15,000 plus. Uh, so there are, there are, you know, wealthy nations, they are, they are not behaving responsibly. Uh, best example is USA under Trump administration. It has stepped out of this uh, Paris Agreement. It is number two polluter. Uh, then Australia and France, uh, you, we find this political turmoil is going on over there. Uh, just uh, tax hike or this fuel cut down, emission cut down, steps taken by government are resisted by people. So this is not good. The way things are going on is not good. Now let me take you through this uh, relationship between Saudi Arabia and uh, USA. CIA's latest report has blamed MBS, that is Mohammed bin Salman, this crown prince uh, that uh, he has personally ordered uh, murder of uh, Khashoggi. Uh, 
and the global outrage is quite visible but we find that USA is not being that aggressive with uh, Saudi Arabia if we go back in the history of Saudi Arabia and USA then it all started it back in 1945 USA was seeking oil Saudi was seeking military assistance it was a win-win for both of uh, them but it was more tilted inside of uh, USA so uh, this oil supply consistent oil supply from or reliable oil supply from Saudi Arabia has helped the USA to you know to uh, means fuel was ne a thing that was uh, you know USA was never short of and the USA's interest in Afghanistan was uh, was merging with uh, uh, with Saudi Arabia because uh, communism was uh, back in 1978 uh, communism was trying to spread its roots in Afghanistan uh, about which uh, Saudi Arabia was a bit skeptical there were other countries as well where uh, Marxism and communism were trying to spread in this Arab world so this uh, Saudi Arabia was seeking help of USA at that point of time and USA was there now post-war reconstruction of uh, Europe as well it was uh, something in favor of uh, Saudi Arabia and USA so they were doing this thing together uh, but now things have changed uh, right uh, USA at present is not reliable on Saudi Arabia because USA itself is uh, one of the top three players as far as this crude production is concerned number one is Saudi Arabia then you have Russia and then you have USA so those days are gone when USA was uh, you know too much uh, uh, dependent on Saudi Arabia for oil supply now Saudi, uh, Saudi Arabia uh, the main source of income is oil but you cannot have you cannot just keep all your eggs in one basket uh, so Saudi Arabia has invested huge amount of money in treasury securities and private businesses in USA but if we look at the situation, then Saudi Arabia needs USA more than USA needs Saudi Arabia. So here we have this clear, you can say, advantage. USA is having an upper hand. So USA, if uh, USA is willing, then it can put pressure on Saudi Arabia and MBS, but it is not doing. There is a huge difference in ideology as well. Uh, Saudi Arabia, USA is democratic country. Saudi Arabia is autocratic country. In fact, uh, Wahhabism and other sort of ideologies are quite near and dear. Uh, or they have their you know contacts in in this uh, ruling family so that's something that is not taken very well by many UN uh, US senators as well or parliament members of USA if I put it this way uh, that's what US senators are and uh, you see MBS uh, his strategy in geopolitics has failed Houthis are now uh, you know more strong in Yemen in Lebanon Hezbollah which is again supported by Iran they are all uh, getting more and more stronger and uh, uh, this uh, senators are against this behavior of that so we can see one undercurrent uh, right uh, uh, we can clearly see a changing undercurrent in this uh, Republican Party and uh, mr. Obama as well uh, used to refuse to, he has many times uh, said clear no to Saudi's demand of striking Syria and and not going ahead with this Iran nuclear deal but here we find that uh, Mr. Trump has stepped out of Iran nuclear deal so all these uh, things are not a bit healthy right USA they are they have this upper hand they have this chance that they can control Saudi Arabia now if you go through this item I will ask you this one is a pure political one you can ignore this one but this one right there are a few points out there here it is talking about this behavior how group behavior impacts us here it is talking about some positive things of uh, uh, social media like uh, you know fundraising like protecting people or you know finding uh, parents of lost kids and here it is talking about that we need to keep fine balance there are rules and regulations that we have to sort out and things so help yourself with this one it's going to be very easy let me take you through some important news item why strip verma of powers suddenly has been asked by supreme court this cbi versus cbi case cabinet clears policy to double agri export so that's a good news for farmers uh, if we can sell some items in international market then it will fetch more money for our farmers which is good for them cbi confronts uh, michael with documents or uh, this investigation or this uh, you know remand that is going on air pollution causes one in eight deaths uh, so that's a big red flag and look at the figures of uh, our country we are in a very bad position as far as this pollution is concerned tourists bring a wave of uh, trash to beaches of our country that's a matter of shame uh, Kia, that's a company, right? Uh, it's going to produce its uh, electronic cars. Uh, it's a South Korean company. It's going to uh, 
uh, produce its car in Andhra Pradesh. Here you can see Chief Minister here. So that's a big news for uh, electronic vehicles. OPEC agrees to cut oil production. So this rise and fall of uh, demand and supply. Uh, this uh, cut down can impact uh, fuel prices so that's going to be a bit of problem for our country nasheed to lead maldives delegation at climate summit and uh, this cop 24 basically two killed in chabahar attack so that's a bad news for us because we have heavily invested in chabahar cad may fall that is current account deficit may fall to 2.2 thanks to oil slide because 80 percent of our oil we are importing it uh, pradhan mantri avas yojana uh, urban needs uh, push to succeed has been said in Crystal Research China to build 20,000 forest villages. Uh, these are your vocabs. Uh, yesterday's quiz or map based quiz answer is Reunion Island. A picture based answer is here on your screen. And today's picture based, uh, based quiz is here. This is your map based quiz. Here you can see this country, right? And uh, if you zoom it up, you find this small green dot here. So, what this uh, place is all about and why it is in news. And these are your this is your answer regarding yesterday's question this is your new question you can download the pdf of today's lecture from my every page and twitter handle do make sure that you share this lecture post your answers and don't forget to hit the like button god bless you all jai hind